Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today I'm uh, going to do something slightly different. Iron Man's still going on, but um, basically I'm having some other ideas. The other day I went to a boat show and I got lots of leaflets. So what have we got here? Yacht and event branding, same thing. Marine toilets, uh, electric outboards, the London boat show, anchors, boat building, Boats that come in three pieces for transportation, like little boats. Uh, boat design. Right, so there's quite a lot of stuff you can do with boats, and boats are quite cool, but they're also quite expensive. So I went on a catamaran that was 300 grand, and the one next to it was 800 grand, and there was a yacht round the corner which was something silly like 4.8 million pounds, um, which they wouldn't let us on. So I thought it'd be quite cool to have a boat, but being me, I thought I'd build a boat. So um, i probably start small with a little sort of sailing boat, maybe with an outboard. Maybe I'll make my own electric outboard or some other propulsion method. But basically, how do you make a boat? So I guess traditionally it's timber framed and timber clad. Some of the big yachts are aluminium frames skinned with aluminium. Some of the big ones even have concrete hulls. Um, obviously cruise liners and big ships are steel. So obviously, you know, you can make a boat out of pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be something that floats because the boat's got air in. All you've really got to do is make something that's waterproof and rigid. So then I thought obviously about fiberglass. Lots of boats are made of fiberglass. So a traditional method to make those boats is to make um, an inverse timber frame effectively, skinned with plywood, which makes a mould that you fiberglass on the inside and then you put supports in. That's how you make the hull. Or you can basically do it the other way, where you make um, the actual shape of the boat and then for one-off, say, pin foam over the outside and fibreglass on top of it and then take the fibreglass shell off. So all you have is a fibreglass shell. Uh, basically, you know, timber's not that cheap now. So if you're doing a one-off, I don't really want to make a timber mould. You could make a timber frame, but then it's going to be heavy. It's, you know, I really want to be able to lift it on my own. We're talking about something quite small to start with something I can tow behind a car. So then I had a great idea. Obviously you get rigid, um, infl rigid inflatable boats, which are the ones that have an inflatable outside with a rigid bottom. But making inflatable things is quite hard if you're going to do it DIY because it's hard to make something that's sealed and doesn't let the air out. So then I had a great idea. What can I make the frame out of that's light, rigid, floats like a, a rigid inflatable boat, um, and it's cheap and it's easy to work on. And the answer is expanded polystyrene. So basically, this video I'm going to do some testing. I've cut a piece of expanded polystyrene off some insulation board that you can buy in a DIY store. Um, I actually cut this with a jigsaw, but you could use a bread knife if you want to, so you don't need uh, too many specialised tools. And the plan is to wrap it in fibreglass and see what happens and see how strong it is. And if that works out well, then basically the plan is to build an entire frame for a boat out of expanded polystyrene, wrap the frame in fibreglass, and then stretch fabric over the gaps to make the panels, and basically soak that in fibreglass resin and back it up with fibreglass. So this is just a test. The plan is going to be, um, basically if you use epoxy resin, it doesn't eat through the, through the polystyrene. Polystyrene resin that you use for fibreglassing will eat through the polystyrene. However, I've got some polyester resin, so um, I'm going to use that and I'm going to seal the polystyrene first with PVA so that the uh, polyester resin doesn't eat the polystyrene. Uh, then I'm going to wrap it in fibreglass. I would use woven rovings or another sort of woven fabric because it'll be much stronger. I don't have any, so I'm going to use chopped stranded mat and then we're going to stand on this piece of fibreglass and see how or polystyrene coated in fibreglass will stand on it and see how strong it is. Um, I think it's going to be pretty strong and then I think I can frame up the whole boat um, using only basically a bread knife and a paintbrush to build all of it. So let's coat that with PVA and then we'll get on with some fibreglassing. Okay, this is PVA which is also known as um, uh, wood glue in fact. It says on here PVA admixed adhesive, cedar and primer, bonds most building materials and surfaces, ideal for plastering, rending, sealing and dust proofing. Um, it's basically what I previously used to seal foam before putting polyurethane resin on and I sealed my entire foam Ironman suit in it. 
Um, yeah, wood glue, white glue, Elmer's glue in the US. Anyway, I've got some in a pot and I'm just gonna bodge it on all over. Probably have to do two or three coats just to make super sure that um, polyester resin doesn't come and uh, eat through it and eat through the polystyrene. So I've just done the third coat of PVA, letting it dry um, in between the previous two. Just gonna put that in the sun to dry out and then we'll have a go with some fiberglass. So I've got my piece of polystyrene here that we coated in PVA and I've got some, it's basically cheap chop stranded mat. I'd rather use a woven fabric as I said before, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna do the test with this. Basic plan is to uh, wrap this all around the polystyrene and uh, wet it through with polyester resin. So if you're doing anything with fiberglass, wear a respirator and wear gloves. So I'm just gonna put those on and then the basic plan is to damp down or wet through the first edge and let that go off. And then once that's stuck, I will continue to wrap it around. I think I can actually do this all in one go. I was gonna let the uh, first one go off so it sticks, but it seems to have stuck pretty well. So I'm just gonna continue wrapping it all the way around. Okay, so there it is. It's a bit of a mess. Obviously the chopped stranded mat falls to pieces. I'd much rather use a woven mat that doesn't have all the short fibers in, um, but it's fine for a test. So it's completely covered in fiberglass. Um, it seems to, have, there's probably a few air bubbles in it, but anyway, it'll be fine for a strength test. So we'll let that set up and then we'll put it between two bits of wood and stand on it and see how strong it is. So it's about probably an hour or two later, the polyester resin has gone off. So, um, Feels pretty rigid, didn't do a very good job of it. There's quite a lot of air gaps, although actually the polystyrene is only really a former to put the fiberglass over. It does feel really quite rigid and solid. So um, we'll do a strength test on it in a minute. Basically the plan for the next video on this is to build um, a boat frame out of polystyrene and wrap it in fiberglass. As I said before, I'll get some better fabric that I can stretch more easily without it falling to pieces. Um, and the only tools you need to build the boat are a paintbrush and a bread knife or a saw to cut the polystyrene. So let's put that between two blocks of wood and stand on it. So here's the piece, I've got two blocks of wood. Um, feels really strong. I'll start with them a bit closer together so I don't just break it straight away. I'm pretty sure that's gonna hold my weight with no problems. Looks pretty good. how well that's gonna let's just see yeah that's pretty strong so um, pretty sure that'll be fine for a small boat frame 